too good to be true. Oh, you're here. Wait, I'm drinking. This is too good to be true. Mm. Oh my God. This is like making love to a bean. Several kinds of beans. Wow. So, I'm Buzz Feiler. I'm an evolutionary astrologer. <laughs> and this is the evolutionary astrology message for the week between the 8th and the 15th of September 2018. How have you all been doing? First of all, happy Rosh Hashanah, happy new year for all of you of the Jewish tradition. But even if you're not, it's an ancient uh, lunar calendar that was actually derived from the Mesopotamian one. So uh, Jews don't have the... Uh, the let's say the rights over it because it's a Mesopotamian calendar it was in the east and in Babylon in Iraq present-day Iraq and Iran and and uh, Turkey and Syria uh, much uh, before it was it was established Judaism let's say and we adopted it so the Lunar New Year begins today in the Jewish tradition. And not today, during the next few days, this week. And if we're talking astrologically, things are chilling down. We can feel everything lightening up or uh, cooling down. It's been a very hot summer and a very hot winter if you are in the southern hemisphere and if you are in the northern hemisphere you can feel fall coming we are heading to the fall equinox that's the spring equinox uh, for the southern hemisphere and there's a feeling that things are falling into place there's a feeling we have more time and more energy to deal with our challenges there's a, feeling, there's a feeling we don't need so much feedback or support from our uh, uh, surroundings. And generally speaking, our batteries are filling up. And that's a good thing. That's a good thing. The only thing that worries me in the configurations in the sky, I mean, it's not that I lose sleep over it, but... Uh, the influence that is a little unsettling is again everything that is uh, go, that the planet of love is going through, that Venus is going through. Poor child, you know, she hasn't had much rest during the last few months and she's still heading into a retrograde in October. And Venus is in charge of important things like satisfaction, like our self-value and value in general the way we bring in income and what we have and the aesthetics that we hold dear and our bodies and our relationships and love and the comfort we draw through them and and, uh, and uh, essence we draw through them the value we draw through them and Venus is going to undergo a square, an exact square by Mars this week, and then an opposition from Uranus. And at the new moon, she's going to uh, uh, be conjunct the moon, or very close to the moon, and opposing Uranus, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe I am mistaken. Uh, I'm not sure she's close to that new moon. Let's see. I'm not sure, but two days later she hits the moon, so she's she cl she's close enough. And this could be a peak time of changes within relationships. People can experience separations. People can experience getting back together or meeting new people. Same thing for work relationships. And if you are in a relationship right now that you feel needs some updating, needs some renewal, needs some upgrade, that things are not as bright and shiny as they was, you know, there's some cobwebs over places that once used to be polished. 
then yes, this is a great time to do that and bring back that innovative spirit into your relationships, into your projects, into your uh, relationship with your body and senses. And know that this is the time to do it. This is not a time to seek stability or common ground. This is the time to actually advance forward, says Uranus. But do that in a logical manner. We have to be very careful to be tolerant enough and patient enough with our partners, with people around us. The great danger is that we could throw away the baby with the bathwater, we could be intolerant and have a very short fuse at this time. So, um, let's go down to the weekdays. The 8th, Saturday. Basically, not a bad day. Not at all. We're having this grand trine. Remember, a day before that, we had Mercury create this grand trine between Uranus and Saturn. And now the moon is heading in and fueling that grand trine. And it's just a feeling that we can, we are apt to deal with the challenges that life throws at us. Um, our batteries are getting recharged. Things are falling into place, and we're heading into this new moon. By the way, this is the day that uh, Venus is getting that square from Mars. So um, just be aware of, of unnecessary aggression or intolerance within relationships, within your communications with others, and uh, basically also have more patience for yourself. And... As I started saying, the ninth is a new moon. So remember that every new moon is a time of an energetic imprint. Two days before the new moon, a day after the new moon, we are like sponges. If we're angry, if we're intolerant, if we're uh, horny, if we're sad, all of those energies are imprinted and are come back up to the surface again and again through the next lunar cycle of June. 29 and a half days. So mind your energies. And this new moon happens in 17 degrees Virgo. It is a new moon of health, of maintenance, of starting to take care of things that have been neglected. I'm cleaning my car. I'm cleaning the house. I'm fixing the drapes. I'm, uh, I'm uh, putting up a new shelf. I'm um, uh, cutting my hair, I'm cutting my nails, I'm, uh, I'm buying myself some new clothes, I'm uh, doing my closet, changing it from winter to summer clothes, or vice versa. And all of these things, you know, that ha needed to be done a long time ago, we could be working through these days really punctuously and, 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 and uh, efficiently and, and just you know, put a V in another task, and another task, and another task, and that's a good thing. And of course, when it comes to the maintenance of the body, <coughs> Virgo is very active, and we can understand that we should live a less stressful li life, that we should drink more water, that we should eat more greens, that we should sleep more. All of these ideas are now on the table, and the same for the healing of the world. Tikkun Olam, as we say in Judaism, the correction of the world, not only ourselves, because we understand that we are interlinked with Virgo. We understand that everything affects everything, and we are linked. And that's why healing the world will heal me. And if the world is not healed, I cannot be healed. We are interconnected. So there could be a lot of social um, themes going around right now. I could want to... Um, help my peers or, you know, volunteer or have some, <coughs> some projects, be involved in some projects that have a social atmosphere to them, and be active within NGOs or things like that, non-governmental organizations. So basically, uh, that's the new moon, and it brings in a very energetic night, Sunday night, um, could be great for intimacy and could be great for just, you know, enjoying life and going out and a uh, very, very nice time. But I just mind that the 10th is a very sensitive day. So it's like if you're hungover or something, it's going to be even worse. 
it's a moon opposition Chiron day um, and you shouldn't look for uh, any supports from outside only from within don't be too judgmental on the 10th and evening time it's a great time to take some physical energy out do some exercise go out running go out for a walk if you're too tired um, forget about it don't uh, don't uh, <laughs> don't listen to my to, to your astrologer Tuesday the 11th there's something nice happening in the sky first of all this is the day that Mars moves back into Aquarius it was in Aquarius but it had to retrograde back into Capricorn and now it's moving back into Aquarius and it does that sextile Chiron this is a great time to heal our own wounds to heal the wounds of others within our own group to be assisted by others to heal my own emotional wounds and to walk forward this is a time that we could feel more powerful this is a time that we could feel that things are opening up and working out our way there is a triangle in the sky between Pluto and Jupiter in the Sun on the 11th giving a lot of personal power and a lot of personal ability and a feeling of some kind of luck in the air um, However, things that can come up to the table is how much I'm giving, especially to my dear loved ones, and how much am I receiving back, and what should I change, or how should I mature in what I give out to the world. The 12th, Wednesday, that's a not so uh, tranquil day, and if you need to go on the road on that day, if you need to do some physical work or something important happening, just be mindful. It's a day that is more prone to accidents. It's a day that more that is more prone to impulsive behavior and, and all kinds of things like that. There's a grand square in the sky between the Moon and Venus and the, the, the conjunction between Moon and Venus is great at, at, uh, as a standalone, you know, it, it means that we can enjoy ourselves a lot more with the company of others that are close to us and that we have an intimate relationship with, that we can feel very alike with and very open with and very natural with. Um, but that conjunction is square Mars, opposition Uranus, and that's the day that uh, Venus is going to be opposite Uranus exactly. And we have Mars uh, T-squaring these these two and the dragon's north node squaring it from beneath so I would take an extra bag of patience and calm for Wednesday the, sec the, the 12th of, um, of September and try to be patient and do let yourself step out of your comfort zone and try new things on that day. Thursday, the, thir the 13th, um, well, very nice afternoon, very communicative, very artistic, very gentle. Thursday afternoon and nighttime are wonderful. The morning time, uh, it's good for doing errands and all kinds of things that you need to do. Uh, doesn't, you know, it doesn't smell too bad and it doesn't smell too good. It's, I'm ambivalent about it. And then the 14th Friday, fun day for everything that is not of the left mind, okay? That is of the right mind. Everything that is artistic, musical, spiritual, going out places, traveling, enjoying yourself, seeing a movie, um learning, expanding your horizons, going on a journey. All of these things are amazingly blessed on Thursday night and Friday all through the day. But if you need to be more logical on that day and make logical decisions, then please try to isolate yourself a little bit from your feelings for your needs and wants and put some common sense into things before you make decisions. On the 15th, very energetic morning, that's a Saturday, go out jogging or something, very energetic morning, 
but other than that not a lot of transits happening pretty ambivalent about that day as well um you just enjoy it it's, a, it's the weekend it's saturday and that's actually a day before um i don't know I'm gonna forget about it so that's about it we're still looking for two more students for the english beginners group if you want to study with me from wherever you are around the world through the smartphone or the computer screen once a week for an hour and a half together with students from all over we could all see each other hear each other everything is recorded for you you could see my computer screen do it study astrology with me we are looking for two more people we want to open up this group so uh, i might be a little more convenient regarding uh, payment if you come and uh, help us uh, start this group and besides that i want to thank you for commenting sharing and liking these videos that expose them to more people and of course for private consultations private lessons or any question you might have feel free to contact me if you are an open member this uh, saturday the 8th there's a talk with gali livne satpuran about spiritual leadership in the 21st century and tomorrow sunday the uh, 9th of September there's a panel with five different astrologers about the Venus cycle so please join us and see you all soon thank you for listening namaste goodbye